I recently did a tutorial series on creating a chili plant that's available to my subscribers on Substack in both written and video form, link in the description. But I thought one really important technique to share with you is this one tip that helps me a lot when modeling objects with repeating groups of parts like these branches on the chili plant. So in this video, I'll show you the quick and easy way of grouping those objects together so you can move them around, copy them, rotate them and so forth really easily and quickly. So I'm in Blender 4.5. I've got my screencast keys down the bottom corner here. And I've got my chili plant stem just here on the left hand side and my branches to add over here. Now the problem is I could select these and press G to grab and try and just kind of place them into position. That can get a little bit awkward. I could turn snapping on. So snap to volume. That snaps to the volume of the object, meaning it takes the center of the point you snap to. So if I press G to grab now, it will try and take the closest point, which is that point there. And it should snap it to the middle of this volume just here. And if I press G to grab, it will try and find the closest point. It's struggling at the moment though because that's the closest point. So it's quite awkward. In the snapping menu, I could try something like center and snap that. That's not working because it's taking the center. Active should work, however. So the active object is this one here and I press G to grab. It's doing a much better job. But as I try and rotate it, it's taking the medium point instead of the active object as the rotation. So what I need is some way of grouping these objects together so that their kind of object origin is at the base here and I can easily snap it to my stem and duplicate it as a group. So I'll undo those changes and come back to this point here. Now you might be thinking, well, why don't you just select them all and press Control J to join? Well, I've got all sorts of problems there. I'll undo that. I would have to apply all the modifiers that are on these objects. So the stem here has a skin modifier, the leaves have a mirror modifier and a solidify modifier. And if I want to go in and make any changes, I can easily do that because I've got those modifiers making it that bit quicker. So I want to keep the modifiers ideally. So I want a way of grouping them that isn't joining them all together as one object. So this is where empties come in really handy. If I put an empty at the beginning here, I can join these objects or parent the objects to the empty and just move the empty into position and rotate it and so forth. I'll show you exactly what that looks like. So I'll click on the stem of the branch here, shift S to move my 3D cursor to the selected object, cursor to selected. And you can see it moves to the object origin of my object. Shift A to add, and then we come down to empty. I like to use the arrows. If I click on that, I'll show you why. I'll scale it down so you can see it more easily. It's got the Cartesian coordinates, so I'll be able to see the local axis and be able to rotate it nice and easily. Now I can select all my objects, making sure that my empty is the active object. So you can shift left click on that a couple of times to make absolutely sure it's highlighted yellow there. So it is the active object. And then control P is the command to parent and you want to parent to object. You can also find that under the object menu here under parent just there. And you'll find it at the very top there object. So now if I select just my empty, I can scale it down, I can rotate it, or I can G to grab, move it. And you can see all my children of the empty, the empty being the parent, will therefore move along with the empty. I can then turn on my snapping. So up the top here, again, snapping to volume. This time I'll choose center. So it's the center of my empty. And I can then G to grab and snap it to a position on my stem. And you can see it snaps really nicely, especially with the volume snapping activated because it will snap right in the middle there and I can rotate it around the Z. So R then Z, I can scale it up if I want it bigger, maybe rotate it around the local Y. So R, Y, Y. So it's pointing towards the camera more and I can see these lovely leaves and it's really nice and easy. The very slight problem with this technique is it's not so easy to select all these objects and duplicate them. If I want to select all the objects, I have to select the empty first, press shift G is the easiest way and select the children. The frustrating thing about this is there's no way to select the parent and the children. So I have to reselect the parent again. And then I can press Alt D if I want to make a link duplicate so I can make changes to the original in edit mode and update it on the new ones. And then I can move that into position to make sure that you don't have everything selected when you're moving it again. So select just the empty, rotate it round. I can then scale it down and move it into a different position and get some nice branches for my chili plant. So the whole point here is that we have now an empty that is therefore controlling our branch object. And that makes it so much easier to position, rotate, scale the individual objects on a bigger object 
such as this. I use this process in my isometric room course and you can see me moving the objects just here just by using an empty but it allowed me to keep all the modifiers on my objects and I could have a group of objects with one parent and then parent that to another parent with different groups of objects. So hopefully this helps. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.